So in this video, we'll start looking at the contrapositive of the parallel postulate. So before we actually jump into that, let's talk a little bit about if-then statements and how we actually use them in geometry. So the if-then statements, how we use them are actually as kind of input-output statements. So um, we're thinking that there is a certain set of conditions and if those conditions are met, then I actually know something that will follow from that given set of conditions. Such as, let's suppose that <clears throat> if the water is 100 degrees centigrade, then it will be boiling. So if some condition is met, then I know some consequence is going to follow. Now, how we use the if-then statements in geometry, the input-output um, are used to form the chains of logical statements, and those chains are used to then build proofs. And so, we kind of use, <coughs> we've got an initial input, so if A, then B, and then we use, so A is going to be the input, B is going to be the output. So if A, then B, the output then becomes input for the next statement. So if A, then B, if B, then C. That output becomes the input for the next statement. If C, then D, and that output then becomes input for another statement. If D, then E, and so on and so on and so on. And so this is how we use our if-then statements to build our chains of logic and to put together to make proofs. And so if we want to represent our if-then statements symbolically, um, we really just use an arrow to do that. So if we had the if, if we had the symbolic statement if p then q, we could really just represent that as p and then an arrow to the right, q. And so, what exactly is the contrapositive of that statement? Well, the contrapositive is where we would say, if not Q, then not P. Now, an example of that would be if we had an original statement that if the water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit, then the water is boring, boiling. Then the contrapositive of that statement is if the water is not boiling, then the water temperature is not 212 degrees. One kind of important thing about the contrapositive of the if-then statement is that they are really equivalent statements. Now, what it means to be equivalent statements is really that the truth values are going to be the same um, regardless of the truth values for P and Q. So, in a way, it's kind of saying the exact same thing in a different way. And so now, what exactly does the parallel postulate say? It really says that here's our situation. We have two lines, L and M, and L and M are actually crossed by a transversal, T. If the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is going to be less than 180 degrees, then we know that the lines L and M intersect on the same side of the transversal as angle 1 and angle 2. And so the contrapositive of the parallel postulate will then say that if L and M do not intersect on the same side of the transversal, then angle 1 and angle 2, um, the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 cannot be less than 180 degrees. Now kind of the implications for that, now that could mean a couple of different things. It could actually mean that either the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is equal to 180 degrees, or it could mean that the sum of angle 1 and angle 2 is greater than 180 degrees. So if it were, were greater than 180 degrees, then this situation actually tells us something about the angles on the other side of the transversal. 
And so here's the situation. Let's suppose that we've got angle one and angle two on one side, angle three and angle four on the other side. Now angle one plus angle four is equal to 180 degrees, and angle two and angle three are 180 degrees. Both of those give us straight lines if we kind of add them together. Now if we take in angle one plus angle two is 180 degrees, angle two plus angle three is 180 degrees, and so if we kind of add together both sides of those equations, what that really means is that angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four actually add together to give me 360 degrees. Now, kind of, if we look at that equation just a little bit more, and we've got angle one plus angle two plus angle three plus angle four being 360 degrees, if the first two add together to be more, to be greater than half of 360, so greater than 180, then it must mean that the sum of the other two must be less than half of 360 degrees. And so what that means <coughs> is that on one side of the transversal, the sum is greater than 180, then that forces the other side of the transversal the sum of the angles to be less than 180 degrees. And so the parallel postulate would then tell us that um, the two lines L and M are going to intersect on the other side, and the same side as angle three and angle four. And so the contrapositive of the parallel postulate, along with this just observation that we made that if the sum of two of them are greater than 180, then the other two have to sum to less than 180, that statement actually leads to the statement that if two lines do not intersect, then the sum of the interior angles on the same side of the transversal must sum to 180 degrees. And so this actually gives us um, something uh, a little bit stronger than the contrapositive, but it gives us an idea of how the um, sums of the angles being 180 forces the lines to be parallel. And so kind of looking at that picture again, um, if two lines, if the sides, um, add, if the two interior angles on the same side of the transversal add up to 180, then um, the two lines, uh, then the two lines are going to, be, uh, oops, let me set that backwards. If our lines are parallel, then the sum of those two angles must add up to 180 degrees.